Father, Father Sheikh. Try Yani, we say that uh, asking them, and they, they say, no, you can't do it, method in. With regards to doing something. Try We say that it depends. There's no black and white answer on this one. There's some things in which the father has a greater right to be obeyed. And there's some things in which the mother has a greater right in being obeyed. First and foremost, as we all know, the obedience have to be, it has to be in obedience to Allah. As is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet There's no, dis no obedience to the makhluk and the disobedience of the creator of the makhluk. Everybody understand this? In the mata'atu, fil ma'roof. It's only obedience in that which is ma'roof. And ma'roof is that which does not go against kitab and sunnah. It doesn't go against the sound intellect. It doesn't go against common sense. Everybody understand this? So anything that isn't haram, anything that isn't advice, that isn't a neg neg means of negativity, you have to listen to your parents. They're in. Even if they're not Muslim. Everybody understand this? Obviously, not growing your beard, gr don't grow your beard is munka. Don't go away jab is munka. Don't go to the masjid is munka. Everybody understand this? Unless there's an excuse for not going to the masjid. Which people have to be careful because many times, uh, and I'm not saying this about any person, I'm saying this generally. Many parents, they prevent their children from going to the masjid and they prevent their children from becoming religious because they're afraid. And they'll disguise this fear with all types of excuses. You have homework to do. The mash is far. It's dangerous outside. Something can happen to you. Something could go wrong with you. Well, lie. I know, brother, years ago, when I first came to New York City in this masjid, the brother lived across the street from the Van Wick. Five minute walk. He met me, fell in love with me. MashaAllah, I want to come every day. I want to see you every day. I want to shake your hand. I want to talk to you every day. And he started coming for Fajr. When I met the brother, the brother had, as we say, a butt face. No hair on his face. Shaven. Hair on his arms. Hair on his head. No hair on his face. So he wanted to come to the masjid. He started coming to the masjid. And all of a sudden, his mother said, don't go to the masjid for Salat al-Fajr. So I saw the brother after a couple of days. said, what happened? He says, oh, you know, my mother, she's afraid. She's scared that someone's going to mug me and beat me up for walking across the street to the masjid. My mother, she, she's upset. She says, don't go to the masjid. You can't leave the house until after such and such a time. I said, cool, no problem. As time went on, he started learning more. Then he started growing his beard. You know, and the brother was a hairy brother. His beard started growing, growing, growing. And he ran into another problem with his mother. No, you can't do that. No, trim your face. No, you don't have to have a beard. You don't have to grow your beard. You shouldn't grow your beard, etc., etc., etc. And he kept getting into problem after problem after problem with his mother, who was a Muslim. Who was a Muslim. If the brother said, Omi, I'm going out to go to Manhattan for school in the morning. What would she say, Sheikh Yaman? Cool. Go, no problem. No I'm going to go to work in the morning. No problem. no problem. Rather, I'm not saying about this brother and sister, but a Muslim, I want to see my girlfriend before I go to work at 5 a.m. No problem. Fudger? No. Dangerous. Jamaica, New York. Southside Jamaica, Queens. Guns, knives, drugs. Cabot, 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 cabot. Grow the beard. Beard is not obligatory. It's only a sunnah, it's only an Arab custom, it's an Arab style, you're not Arab, you shouldn't go to beard. The main excuse is, get a tattoo, normal teenager. Earring, nose piercing, belly piercing, what? Iowa. Mohawk, shaving hair, crazy car with the, the kid driving crazy, drifting, whatever they call it, that's what? Normal. Beard, no. Thobe, dress, no. I want to be religious, I want to start seeking the ilm. No, you can't go to the masjid, you have homework, clean up, paint, wash, this, that, da, 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 da. Well, Lord, this is very sad. And one of the reasons behind this is, is many parents, they're afraid of their child being labeled a terrorist. They're afraid of their child being labeled an ISIS member, an ISIS uh, uh, affiliate or initiate or whatever the case may be. They're afraid of their children being looked at, being pointed, being singled out, being pulled over by the NYPD for being a religious zealot, an extremist, a fundamentalist, and a sad. For so many aspects, love of the kuffar, fear of the kuffar, but for Allah to choose your child to love the deen, to want to practice the deen, you should be crying, breaking down on the floor, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah chose your son and opened his heart. That your daughter has enough courage to wear hijab, 
to wear layers of clothes that's 90 degrees outside. It's hot. It's humid. She's hot. You're hot with clothes on, let alone her. People walking up and down the street naked, tights, hair, neck, breast, butt, out, public like it's nothing. And she says, I'm going to wear hijab from top to toe. I don't care what they think. I don't care what they look. I don't care if they stare. I don't care if they beep their horns. I'm wearing my hijab. For Allah to make your daughter to be so courageous, so brave, that's a tremendous ni'mah of Allah Azawajal. So how wretched are you as a person for you to stop your son and your daughter from wanting to practice the deen? That's sad. And it reflects the disrespect. It reflects, it sheds light on the disrespect that you have Allah for his ni'mah. If Allah made your son a doctor, you will praise him. He made your son a major athlete, scholarships, NFL, NBA. Ha! Oh, praise the Lord. Muslim, religious, pious, he's going through a phase in his life. He's brainwashed. The Miyaji has him brainwashed at the, at, the, at the mosque. It's sad, unfortunately. So the point I'm trying to get to is, is that there are many parents who prevent their children from doing things which are not only obligatory, but also things that are recommended. And they push their children away from the deen, but they don't say it. So be careful, brothers and sisters. Don't be, be careful. Your father, he may not want you to come to the masjid only because he's afraid that you're going to become mutawa. He's afraid that you're going to become a sheikh. Honestly, he's afraid that you're going to listen to this guy, this wacko guy talking. And he's going to fill your, your head with all these ideas and sell you this dream of being this glorious, illustrious student of knowledge. And I'm going to lose you. It's a reality. Know this for sure. So beware of your enemy, even if it's your own father, even if it's your own mother, even if it's your own wife who says, don't go to the masjid. You don't have to go to the masjid. You can trim your beard. You don't have to grow all the way. Just, you know, shape it up a little bit. Be nice. Have some style. Beware, unfortunately. So back to the question. If your parents tell you to do something which is haram, obviously you can't do it. If they tell you to do something that goes against the deen, obviously you can't do it. But if they tell you something that isn't haram, even if it's not mandatory, even if it's not recommended, it's ma'roof, it's not munkah, then you should do it and you have to do it. So your parents, your father says go right and your mother says go left. Both of what they commanded you with, right and left, are both ma'roof. Neither of the two is munkar. We are Arab up to speed. Neither of the two, right or left, they're both good directions. Who do you listen to? We say it depends. If it's an issue that's pertaining to something which the mother knows better, she has more knowledge, more insight. She has more experience in this thing, then you should listen to your mother. If it's an issue in which the father doesn't know too well, the mother has an inside scoop, inside information, you should listen to your mother, such as getting married. Your father says, marry this girl, son. I don't like her. Marry her. I'm telling you to marry her. If you don't marry her, I'm not going to pay for your wedding. I'm not going to go to your wedding. I'm going to disown you. You have to marry this girl. Everybody understand this? And the mother says, don't marry this girl. She's no good. Trust me. I would listen to my mother because a woman knows the woman better than the father does. The man is looking at the family. Sheikh Ammon's a good guy. Well, I know him for 30 years. We grew up. We practiced the sunnah together. But that don't mean I know Sheikh Ammon's daughter that well. I know him in the masjid, his beard. That don't mean I know his what? Let alone the woman's eye. Her vision is different than the man's vision. Her intuition, her, the woman's heart, as they say, is different than the man's heart. So in this situation, I would listen to what? The mother, because she knows better in this situation. As far as if it was an issue pertaining to men, work, outside of the household, something like this, then I would listen to the father. Because in most cases, he knows better than the mother, in most cases. So there is no one ruling. It depends. The general rule is that the mother has more rights than the father. The mother has more benevolence, more rights to benevolence than the father does. That's the general rule, as I mentioned in the hadith. The Prophet says, respect your mother. Respect your mother, respect your mother. Who has more right to my, uh, my suhba, my good companionship? The mother, of course. The mother bore man. Allah talks about in the Quran. Quran. She was in pain when she had the child, when she gave the child, when she breastfed the child, when she weaned the child. There's no doubt about that. However, there are some people who may have more knowledge, more insight, more experience than the next parent. So it all depends on who it is. Sometimes it could be your mother. Other times it could be what? Your father. And sometimes you may have to regard or disregard both of them and do what you know is best. So it all depends. You have to seek help in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah for true guidance and for the courage to follow the guidance that Allah shows you. You ask Allah to allow you to follow the deen. He allowed you. Now you're scared and you're afraid. That's my advice on this situation. Hopefully it's clear. Wallahu ta'ala alam.